In our world, surely everyone has their religion and their beliefs. People believe in God. People believe in Buddhism and Islam. Believe in the prophecies from God, his sheep. But who has wondered whether these prophecies are true or not? Will it happen? Who is the guarantor of these prophecies? Currently, there are many prophecies for the year 2023 that all of us must be surprised by their accuracy. But for Christians, the most reliable prophecy is from the Bible. But those who do not follow God, they have strong faith in ancient prophets such as Nostradamus, Baba Vanga, Emmanuel Swedenborg, Master Kong Ming Zhu Liang, etc. We can see what these prophecies say about war, epidemics, or the future of the world. There are many similarities between these prophecies. So, in today's video, let's compare the commandment from God and the prophecy from Nostradamus and see how similar they are. A Great War Revelation 27 to 10. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea, and they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet were. And they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. God has warned there will be a war on earth, as we have seen war has broken out between Russia and Ukraine, causing so many consequences for the world economy, high inflation, human error coal, and affecting the human spirit. Not sure if the situation will become tense or not. Have we been affected anymore? When will the war stop? The bad news is don't fool yourself into thinking 2023 will be any better if you thought 2022 was a terrible year. Nostradamus's writings are currently being utilized to foretell the end of the world in Europe. The following remark serves as the foundation for this assertion. Seven months of the Great War, people dead of evil doing. Rouen, Evro, shall not fall to the king. Some people have interpreted this to suggest that a third global war is about to break out in the Ukraine crisis. The seven-month timescale for the conflict may at first seem like cause for celebration, but given the fearsome nuclear arsenals of nations like America and Russia, it may be wiser to err on the side of caution. Parisians would be wise to hide out in Rouen until the situation settles. Quatrain 523 reads, the two contenders will unite together. When most others unite with Mars, the African leader is fearful and trembles. The dual alliance is separated by the fleet. The African leader is a reference to the South African-born tech billionaire Elon Musk and his plans to colonize Mars. Indeed, this quatrain, with the line from another verse, the light of Mars shall go out, indicates that Musk will have to shelve his audacious plans to leave the Earth for the Red Planet and remain among us while the world ends, which, if true, is disappointing news. Mars, one of the Earth's closest neighboring planets, is arguably the best possible destination for human expansion beyond the boundaries of our world. The temperature and sunlight conditions of Mars's surface are closer to Earth's conditions than on any other celestial body in the solar system. However, with reduced air pressure and an atmosphere of only 0.1% oxygen, 
most human life would not survive without complex life support systems and protective living structures. Still, the scientific community persists in discovering a way to see science fiction become science fact on Mars. Christians do not need to fear Mars colonization efforts. Colonizing Mars is not akin to abandoning Earth or the world God has given us. The Bible tells us that everything in God's creation, such as galaxies, stars, planets, people, plants, and animals, all things were created for God's glory. We are not forbidden from exploring our world, so we can assume the same holds for other planets. According to Nostradamus' prophecies, the environment can suffer another catastrophe in 2023. When the rainbow appears, the astrologer predicts that the dry ground will get even more parched and there will be enormous floods. This forecast for the coming year doesn't seem all that far-fetched given the worsening effects of climate change. England experienced one of its hottest summers on record in 2022. The Met Office said that the nation received only 56%, 46.3 millimeters of its typical July rainfall. This past July in Scotland was the driest since 1836 due to a lack of precipitation a consequence of global warming that may last until 2023. This is also mentioned in Genesis 8.22. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Indeed, the weather will no longer be pleasant if people continue to carry out projects that are devastating to the environment industrialization and modernization continue to develop. We can't help but pay attention to Mother Nature. Then, one day, people will get angry, and there will be unforeseen disasters to come upon us. In one of Nostradamus's other prophecies, he writes, Sooner or later, you will see great changes made, dreadful horrors, and vengeance. This prediction hints that more social upheaval and civil unrest could take place in the upcoming months. The prophet goes on to write about trumpets shaking with great discord and a broken agreement, hinting yet again at some form of revolt or revolution somewhere on earth next year. This year, Iran saw weeks of riots following the murder of Masa Amini for not wearing her hijab correctly and it wouldn't be a surprise if more riots were to take place in 2023. But if we read Acts 1940, for we are in danger of being charged with rioting today, since there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion. God, unlike us, never exacts revenge for immoral reasons. He seeks to exact revenge on those who have wronged and rejected him, However, we can pray for God to complete and wholly revenge himself against his adversaries and to vindicate those who are tormented by wickedness. In Psalm 94.1, the psalmist asks God to vindicate the upright, not out of an unbridled sense of vengeance, but rather as a proper punishment from the everlasting judge whose verdicts are flawless. Even though the righteous seem to flourish and the innocent suffer, only God can punish them. The Lord is a jealous and vengeful God. The Lord exacts retribution and is enraged. The Lord exacts revenge on his adversaries and doesn't relent in his fury. Mm -hmm.